Okay, hi. So in this video, we're going to speak a little bit about immunity. Now, immunity basically means that you will resist a particular disease. So if you are immune to chickenpox, it means that you will not get chickenpox again in the future. So immunity means that we will resist disease or infection. And the way that this works is that if, you're, if you become infected by a particular disease, you'll remember in previous videos that we spoke about pathogens and antigens. Well, the antigen is the marker on the pathogen. And this is obviously recognised by our body as being foreign. Now, when your white blood cells make up antibodies, so antibodies, when your white blood cells make these to fight an infection, once the infection has been uh, eliminated, they remember the antibodies for the pathogens. So antibodies are remembered. Remembered by the white blood cells. So antibodies are remembered by the white blood cells and that means that if the same pathogen comes back again in the future, your white blood cells already know which antibody to make to fight that infection. And usually that means that the antibodies are produced so quickly that we don't have time to even get the infection. So we're infected with the pathogen, but we fight the disease before it actually takes its toll on us. Now we take advantage of this in vaccinations. Vaccinations. So in vaccinations, we actually introduce either the pathogen or part of the pathogen, such as the antigen, in order for our body to actually detect an infection. So, in a way, we almost infect ourselves with a vaccine, but we do it in a really safe way. We use either a dead pathogen or one which is not going to actually cause a disease, and then our body will fight it, and our white blood cells will remember the antigen on the pathogen. So we introduce um, either dead pathogen, dead pathogen, or just the antigen, without the pathogen and our body produces and remembers which is the most important part remembers the antibodies so it'll produce antibodies and remember which ones it needs to fight a given disease that means that in future, if we're infected with the real disease, our body can fight it really quickly and then we have sorted out that problem. And now let's have a look in slightly more detail. This is one of our white blood cells here on the left. And let's say, for example, we're infected with this bacteria which causes some disease. They will have on their surface antigens. And so I'm going to draw an antigen just as this triangle here. And it's something a protein normally which is on the outer membrane of the pathogen and so they're floating around with these antigens and our white blood cells are eventually going to detect this and produce antibodies so for example if we produce an antibody in purple we need to produce one which is going to fit the antigen and so these antibodies will come over here they'll find the antigen like so, and should really be a better fit than that, but it will fit onto the antigen. And eventually our body will fight the pathogen, it will produce loads of these antibodies, and then we have cured ourselves from the disease. The problem here is that when this first happens, because it's going to take us a while to recognise the antigen and to produce all the antibodies, while this is all happening, these guys are reproducing and causing us damage, and we'll probably have an infection. And so, a vaccine is a great way of dealing with this. And so, if we take a dead form of this pathogen, let's make that a bit bigger. So we take this pathogen, shrink him down so he fits in the syringe. So we've got this pathogen. Here we go, sad face on this pathogen his eyes are gone, this pathogen is now dead. Now we take that pathogen, put it into a vaccine, and then this is what we are going to inject into ourselves. So we inject some dead pathogen into ourselves, 
And then our body can do what it would normally do, produce these antibodies which will find the antigen, but because the pathogen is dead, it won't be reproducing and it won't be causing us an infection. But our body still finds it, says, no, that's foreign, we need to reproduce these antibodies. And so we reproduce antibodies, so we get loads of these, and now we are immune. And now what happens in the future when we get lots of these guys infecting us? So we've got pathogen, we've taken in these pathogens. Well, we've already got these antibodies at the ready. They recognize that this is foreign and they will find the antigen, tell our body, no, these guys are foreign, you need to do something about it. And our body will straight away kick into action, kill these pathogens, and then we don't even have time to produce the infection. And so that's how a vaccination works. And vaccinations have saved millions and millions of lives over the years. We can also take vaccinations for more than one thing at once. The MMR vaccine is a common one of those. So the measles, mumps and rubella. I'm sure you've probably all had that vaccine already. Um, and this allows us to defend against more than one disease. Uh, and so it means that we don't have to have loads and loads of different injections. We can just um, go to the doctors once, have the treatment, and then we build up resistance. Very important that not all diseases can be vaccinated against. For example, HIV is a very complex disease, actually, or it's a pathogen. It's a very complex pathogen. It causes AIDS, which is the disease. And that's because it has so many different antigens that it's impossible for our body to really fight it very well. But in diseases like smallpox, that's one you will have to remember, smallpox, smallpox has been completely wiped out been completely wiped out because of very successful immunization and vaccine programs. Now, you do need to know that vaccines are not perfect. Obviously, there's the simple fact that they are pretty painful. A lot of people don't like needles and they don't really want to have them. However, more serious than that, sometimes a vaccination will cause a negative reaction in the body. So some kids in very rare cases have been vaccinated and their body reacts really badly to it and it's actually caused deaths in a number of occasions. And so we do have to realize that there is a risk associated with vaccines. Parents do need to make an educated decision and it's quite difficult for anyone else to influence that. So you need to weigh up really the pros and cons. Obviously vaccines have been extremely successful in reducing, <clears throat> excuse me, reducing the level of certain diseases. It's estimated that around about 100 years ago, half of all deaths in children and young people were caused by infectious disease. And now that has gone down to 0.5%. So it's actually reduced it by 100 times, which is actually obviously a massive positive. However, there is also the risk. And so some parents who have had children who have reacted badly to vaccines will, of course, advise against it. Okay, so that's a brief overview of the vaccination process. Um, you need to realise the difference between vaccinations and, of course, other treatments such as antibiotics that we looked at in the last video. Vaccinations, importantly, can also be used on viruses. Not all viruses, of course, and that's because antigens are present on bacteria and on viruses. So that is another important point there. So if you do have any questions, please do leave them in the comment box below or send me an email using the link. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.